The movie Chick Flick that my wife Kathy and I had been watching for the last two hours was finally over. I'd had one too many beers, but she seemed to enjoy it when I sat down next to her. I just don't understand it, John. How could a husband be so hard-headed that he couldn't understand and forgive his wife for such a small oversight? What the hell do you mean? It wasn't a little thing. She cheated on him, for God's sake. Any wife who cheats on her husband deserves whatever punishment she gets. It's unacceptable in any situation. It's awful as hell and cruel, John. A loving husband would have been more flexible. He would have realized that just because she lost her way doesn't mean she doesn't love him. It means that her feelings for him are less than they should be. A wife who cheats on her husband is really saying that she doesn't respect him and has no remorse in humiliating him even if it doesn't show on his face. He is still less of a man in her eyes. What if that's not her intention? It doesn't matter what her intentions are, Katie. What matters is that she did it, and the outcome is inevitable. This is bullshit, John. I can't believe you're so old-fashioned. All of these things can be discussed and resolved. There is never any need for revenge on the husband's part. It only applies if the wife admits to cheating before her husband catches her, if he finds out before she tells him she is doomed. If she denies it after she is caught, she should be burned at the stake. Most husbands are so oblivious to what their wives are doing that damn few of them ever get caught. This is a silly discussion. I'm going to get ready for bed. I'll be there in a few minutes. Kathy and I spent most of the day at flea markets and yard sales. I didn't mind dragging her along every weekend because I could usually find something to look at while she dug up coasters. She collected old cast iron coasters. The nastier they looked, the more she wanted them. We both worked and saved as much money as we could for our first house. Of course, it had to have a big kitchen with enough wall space for at least a hundred stoves. We had only been married for six years, but had been together for several years before that. She was short and a bit stocky. I often teased her about her childbearing hips. We planned to have a few kids after we moved into our new house. Right now, all we needed was enough money for an 80% down payment. I was finishing up an article in Sports Illustrated, but I couldn't get away from thinking about our conversation that had just taken place. Katie seemed overly defensive about the topic of cheating. It had never been brought up before. In fact, I had never even considered the possibility, but now it had caught my attention. Most of the guys I work with keep their wives on a short leash. I have no control over Katie at all. I've always trusted her and never questioned her fidelity. I never considered cheating on her and hoped she felt the same way about me. Either way, I figured a little digging wouldn't hurt. I was sure I wouldn't find anything, but just to be sure, I'd look. I worked from six to four and Katie worked from eight to six. That gave me a little time to figure things out. The next morning I got off work around nine and swung by the apartment. I didn't know what I was looking for, but it was starting to sound like fun. Sort of like a secret scavenger hunt. I didn't get a chance to start because I smelled a strange Swedish odor as soon as I walked in the door. It was air freshener. A lot of air freshener. I wandered around, sniffing, trying to figure out what was going on. Eventually, I ended up at the fireplace in the living room. Kathy must have burned something in the fireplace and was trying to drown out the smell of burning with the air freshener in the room. The bottom of the hearth was clean and looked like it had just been swept. The black soot on the bricks was still damp. If she had burned something and cleaned it up, there had to be residue somewhere. I figured if she was smart, she would have taken it with her to work. She wasn't smart. In the trash can in the garage was the plastic gasket from the waste paper basket. I spread the newspapers out on the kitchen table and shook out the contents of the bag. It was mostly just black ashes, but there were small bits of paper and a few pictures mixed in. I'd like to say that I managed to restore some of the scraps into something readable, but that was not to be. All I really knew was that she had decided that it was important to burn some of the old papers and photos so that I wouldn't find out about it. That meant that something was going on that she didn't want me to know about. After the conversation last night, I began to worry. My whole life had been about Katie and the future we were building together. Now it seems like I was a little careless in observing what was going on around me. She was not honest with me about some aspects of her life. I knew very little about her work or her workmates. I never thought I needed to know that. Well, now she had my attention. 
On my way to work, I stopped by Radio Shack and bought three voice-activated digital audio recorders and extra batteries. The cell phone office was more than happy to provide me with printouts of the last three months of calls from both of our wireless devices. I explained that the U.S. IRS is doing an audit, and we need the information to verify deductions. I asked for both phones so it wouldn't seem suspicious, but after checking mine, I threw it in the shredder at work. For the first time since I got married, I started thinking badly of my wife. I didn't like that, but I just assumed. I got home a few hours earlier than Kathy and had time to set up the Adim recorders in the living room, bedroom, and kitchen. I had to set up the kitchen one so it wouldn't record the refrigerator running. I turned them each on when I left for work in the morning. Dinner was ready when Kathy came home. Hi, honey. I hope the chili is okay. Sounds good as long as it's not too spicy. About halfway through the meal, I started tasting it. Hey, when I got home, the house smelled like hell. It was somewhere between lilac and burnt rubber. What the hell did you burn in the fireplace before you left for work? She got caught. She tried to hide the fact that she burned stuff, but now it was out in the open. Oh, it wasn't a big deal. Just some old papers and school supplies. Why the hell did you burn them? Why didn't you just throw them in the trash or put them through the shredder? The way you cleaned the fireplace, it looked like you were getting ready for forensics. I don't know. Why is this so important? Katie, I find it very strange that you woke up this morning, got ready for work, burned a bunch of old school papers, and then cleaned it up to make it look like it never happened. You blame me for being suspicious? Also, it didn't look like school papers. It looked like letters and pictures. What the hell did you do? You went through the trash and dug up this junk just to accuse me of something? I did. Fuck you, asshole. You're doing the dishes. I'm going to take a shower, go to bed, and read. You can sleep on the couch. Katie had never talked to me like that before. But then again, I'd never accused her of anything before. A few seconds later, the shower turned on. I pulled her cell phone out of my purse and copied all speed dial numbers, all outgoing calls, all incoming calls, and all messages. It only took a few minutes to scan her address book into a computer file. I didn't mind sleeping on the couch, but the living room still smelled like lilacs and garbage. I had plenty of free time at work, so I took the day off. I turned on the tape recorders and left the house at the usual time, but went to Denny's instead. A little after eight o'clock, I got home. Kathy made one phone call. I'm having some problems at home. No, nothing like that. He just suspects something is going on, but has no idea what it is. He's just annoying and really starting to piss me off. Okay, okay. I think I might be able to do it. Maybe on Friday. I'll see you then. And I have no idea who the mystery person on the other end of the wire was, but I figured I'd find out soon enough. I wonder what was supposed to happen on Friday. And I spent the morning in the library going through her phone calls. I could have done it at home, but the reverse phone book at the library was better than the internet and faster. Of course, it wasn't worth shit for cell phones. I was able to rule out most of the numbers because I knew them or was able to correlate them with her address book. One number that stood out in particular was TR's number. It was on her speed dial and in her address book. Also in the address book was a landline number that appeared to belong to Tom Rollins. Kathy worked with him at Generex, and I had actually met him a few times. The last time was about ten days ago at a corporate event. He and Kathy had been intimate all evening, and I remembered not liking it. He was married to a cute little brunette who didn't seem to be having fun at the party either. I made a list of all the times Kathy had called Tom in the last three months, and all the times he had called her. Not a single text message had come from him. I assumed that Kathy had called Tom this morning. There were a lot of phone calls, but I just assumed. After making a couple copies of the phone list, I walked over to Tom Rollins' house. I figured I had nothing to lose, so I knocked on the door. John Connor, I was hoping to talk to you. Come in. Gosh, this was an unexpected surprise. I'm sorry. I'm at a disadvantage here. I know you're married to Tom, but I don't think we've ever met. My name is Sylvia, but everyone calls me Sly. She held out her hand, and I shook it just out of politeness. John, what I need to talk to you about is the affair your wife and my husband are having. Wow. She punched me right in the face again. I wasn't expecting that either. She seems to know a hell of a lot more than I do. I'm filing for divorce from Tom and putting Katie's name on the suit. 
I have a lot of supporting documents and I'd like to cooperate on a few things. Sylvia, I have no intention of getting you in trouble about this, but I really only found out about this yesterday. I don't have any information that can help you. The only thing I have right now is some phone logs. Let me take a look at those. She was really concerned about the little I had. I gave her one of the copies I had and told her she could keep it. Sylvia started going through the phone logs like an IRS auditor. She made notes in the logs and checked the information against the documents she had. She was smirking, and I thought she was going to burst into laughter at any moment. The more she worked at it, the more excited she seemed. Finally, I stepped in. Is there any information you can share with me? Uh, sure. I'm willing to give you everything I have. Here, this is what I've gathered over the last two weeks. She pushed three motel receipts across the table to me. They were labeled with the date, time, and, of course, the name of the motel. All three were different. All three had been paid for in cash. The stupid donkey doesn't realize that I go through all his pockets every night after he goes to bed. I take the receipts and he doesn't even realize they're missing. He lives in his own world. I'm invisible to him. As we talked, she seemed to get more and more infuriated. I started to get a little worried for my safety. I hoped she wouldn't get upset with me because I was Kathy's husband. The veins ballooned in her neck like a TV wrestler. I don't think I'd ever seen a woman so furious. She made copies of the motel receipts for me and gave them to me. I have many more receipts and other things if you need them. Oh, wait, let me show you something special. She left and soon came back with a Ziploc bag. Inside was a pair of women's panties. Do you recognize these? Sure. In the bag was a pair of gray-green bikini panties that belonged to my wife's set. I took them out of Tom's coat pocket the night of the last company party. He was going crazy, digging through his closet and car trying to find them, but he didn't dare say a word to me. Can I borrow them? Only if you promise to give them back. Deal! For the next hour, Sylvia Rollins ranted and raved like a woman possessed. I tried to leave several times, but I couldn't. Finally, she said she needed to lie down for a while and gave me a chance to leave. She mentioned that Tom hated condoms and refused to use them. When Kathy got home, I had dinner ready. I was hungry as hell because I had missed dinner. My wife was as unfazed as a pickle. I realized why I hadn't noticed anything before. I put the dishes away and put down a couple slices of key lime pie, her favorite, and some coffee. It was nice and quiet. Katie, can I ask you a question without you getting mad at me? Are you still doing the fireplace thing? No, it's something else. Okay, go on. Where are the panties that go with this bra? I picked up the gray-green push-up bra that matched the panties Sylvia had given me. I don't know, probably in my dresser. What the hell are you doing going through my underwear? Are you turning into some kind of pervert? Could you go get some panties for me? Katie just sat there staring at her pie. There was no way she could get them, and she knew it. I could tell she was getting angry. You know, I just remembered. I threw them out last week. The whole top elastic had come off, and I just didn't feel like fixing them. They were less than a month old, Katie. You only bought them at the mall three weeks ago. How did they wear out so fast? Now she was starting to boil. Her lower lip trembled. The veins in her neck were bulging. Her fists were clenched tight. Damn it. It was like I was with Sylvia again. All right, Mr. Know-it-all. Are you going to tell me what happened to my underwear? Last week when we were getting ready to go to your company party, I watched you get dressed. You wore this bra and the panties that go with it. I remember thinking how good you looked. When we got home from the party, you undressed in the bathroom, but I noticed you weren't wearing any panties. How did you manage to lose your underwear from the time we left the house until we got home? I think you're wrong. I did have them when I got home. You just didn't see them. All right. Sighs. Then tell me, how did they end up in Tom Rollins's coat pocket? I picked up the panty bag. Where the hell did you get them? From Tom's wife, Sylvia. Why do you ask? You son of a bitch. Stop sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. There's nothing going on between me and Tom. I have no idea where his wife got my bottoms. Do you have any more bullshit you want to dump on me? Just one more thing, Katie. Here's a little questionnaire I made up. I'd like you to fill it out. All I want to know is the date and place you met other men outside of our marriage. 
This is where I'll start for you. While Kathy watched, I entered the name of the motel and the date she and Tom last dated. On the next line, I simply entered Tom's name and the name of the motel. On the next line, I just put the date. Fill it out for me, Kathy, and then we'll talk more. She knew that the information I had entered on the form was correct. Kathy just stared at the paper, not moving or saying anything. Oh, yeah. One more thing, I said, raising my voice. I'm a little pissed that you and Tom didn't bother to use any protection. It's disgusting that you cheated on me. But it's even worse that you didn't even have the decency to use a condom. You had no qualms about bringing some kind of contagion home to me. That's really disgusting. Did either of them bother to use protection, or is Tom the only one who didn't? Hell no, it was just Tom. He was the only one who hadn't used anything. The room got very quiet. I hadn't expected such an outburst, and I don't think Katie thought about what she was saying until it was too late. In her anger, she'd inadvertently let slip that she'd had affairs with other guys besides Tom. I'd just assumed. With a wave of her hand, Katie threw half off the table and ran out of the kitchen. I heard the bedroom door close and a quiet cry. I went to a motel for the night. I called in sick at work and said I would be gone for a few days. I returned Sylvia's panties as promised. This time she didn't say anything and seemed very depressed. I didn't insist and left as soon as I could. I found a small motel that had weekly rooms with kitchenettes for rent. Kathy wasn't home when I drove by, so I ducked inside and grabbed as much of my stuff as I could. I bought some silverware, plates, and a few pans. It took me about an hour to set up my new kingdom. I couldn't escape the thought that a week ago I had no idea something like this would happen. I started to walk out to my car when I noticed Tom Rollins about five license plates away from me. He was bringing bags and boxes of stuff into the room. I had to laugh to myself. The son of a bitch was doing the same thing I was doing. Either Sylvia threw him out or he got sick of it and left. It didn't matter, but the results were the same. About that time, Kathy's car pulled up. She didn't see me and paid no attention to my car. They talked for a while and then went to their room. After about ten minutes, I decided it was a good time to go home and get the rest of my stuff. I was sure they would be busy for at least an hour. I stowed everything I could in the Honda. I took my computer, cameras, portable TV, all my CDs, and even took my George Foreman. I was turning off the answering machine when there was a knock on the door. Mr. Connor? There were two policemen at the door. Mr. Connor, yes. Are you Katie Connor's husband? Yes. Is she all right? Is something wrong? Save it. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, sir, but your wife is dead. No, you're mistaken. I saw her just two hours ago, and she was fine. Where did you see her? She was at the Desca Motel on Penn Avenue with Tom Rollins. Mr. Rollins is dead, too. How? They were shot. Look, I've been here for two hours, and I don't even have a gun. That can't be... Easy, Mr. Connor. Don't take it personally. We have a shooter. Mrs. Rollins shot them both as they were leaving his room. She discharged her gun at them and then called 911. When we got there, she was sitting by the door of the room, crying. Are you going to be okay, or do you need someone to stay with you? No, I'll be fine. Thank you. Any of you guys want to buy a coaster? It was fine a week ago. What the hell happened? I just assumed.